Shalom, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this week's Sabbath service. I'm going to start off by reading a scripture, and this is from John 13, 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By way of announcements, I just want to remind all those that are watching this that if you would like to join either the Fellowship of Christ, the ecumenical movement, or the Church of Jesus Christ, the online congregation, you can go to cjccf.org or the churchwebsite.org. And on both websites, there is a button up at the top in the menu that says membership. Just click on that and fill out the information. It's a short questionnaire. And within a couple of days, someone from the fellowship should be reaching out to you. The other announcement that I would like to mention is that our resident 70, the head of our missionary committee, Alan Brodus, has accepted a position on the board of the Christian Universalist Association. An announcement will be going out next week, or this week, depending on when you're watching this, at our newsletter congratulating him. If you're friends with Alan, please be sure to reach out and congratulate him. This is a really great opportunity for the fellowship to reach out to the greater Christian community to talk about Latter-day Saint Universalism and how that can work with Protestant Universalism. So again, congratulations on this, Alan. As far as prayer requests, we have several people who have been ill, one person who has had some surgery. COVID is still unfortunately around and with the holiday season, I do fear that there may be an uptick, especially since a lot of us, we've been vaccinated, but there's still variants out there and being vaccinated, this vaccine isn't a cure, it's given to us to help us overcome it. And so it's still possible to get it. And some of it get it very lightly. Some of it get it very, it's very rough. But thankfully, not as many people are dying. So let's remember in our prayers, those that are struggling with COVID, monkeypox, or any of the other illnesses that are going around right now. I know there's a flu-like virus going around where I am. A lot of people have gotten it. And people think they have COVID because it's so bad. But it isn't. Um, if you do think you have this, you've tested for COVID, one of the things that they're advising is you wait a couple of days and test yourself again. But I don't think it's a bad idea to take the precautions, wear a mask as if you had COVID when you're sick. It's just a kind way to let people know that you care about them and to try to keep those germs that come out when we cough or we sneeze to ourselves. I, I think it's a blessing that we have this ability to do so, and it's become more of a normal thing in our society now. So please don't be afraid to wear a mask. And if you really feel unsafe, quarantine as necessary. And of course, if you think you're sick, please contact a medical professional. If you need us to pray for you, just reach out. Info at cjccf.org. We'll be happy to, I'll be happy to share a prayer request. And we here in the fellowship are always happy to pray for those that need our prayers. There is some missionary work going on currently in the fellowship. And we aren't an evangelical group that goes around knocking on doors. But there are there is some outreach that we are working on. There are seekers that are reaching out to us. They want to be trained on how to be ministers here in the fellowship. We would ask that you would please both, first off, pray to the Lord to thank God for these people coming into the fellowship and working with us. And on the other side, please pray for these brothers and sisters. We need your help and they need your help and they need the guidance of the Spirit. Your prayers help move this work forward. I know that there are those that will say not to bother praying, but just to go out and do. But I say do both. Pray like it's up to God. Work like it's up to you. Because without God, we can do nothing. But if we do nothing ourselves, then who is moving this work of the Lord forward? So let's remember those that are seekers, those that are currently looking at the fellowship and, and 
have asked to become ministers in fellowship, let's pray for these brothers and sisters. And for those that are still out there watching this video, wondering if you should step forward, let's pray for those brothers and sisters too. If you'd like to take a moment now to pray and sing a hymn, just go ahead and pause the video, and we'll be right here when you get back. And now for my favorite part of these services, the Shema. I love the Shema because it's an opportunity for us, no matter where we are, no matter when we are watching this video, to say a prayer together, reading the Shema as one, as Latter-day Saints, as one in Christ. I am going to put the words up on the screen. I'm going to first read the Shema in Hebrew, and then I'm going to read it in English. And then there'll be a moment of silence, and that moment of silence is an opportunity for you to read the Shema out loud so you can be one with us. Shema Yisrael, Yiva Eloheinu, Yiva Echad. Hear, O Israel, Yiva is our Elohim, Yiva is unity. This week's message is on the candle of love. And for those that are familiar with my messages, my Thursday thoughts and other things I do, yes, this is my favorite topic. I believe that love is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe the law of love is the law that sums up all of the Torah, all of the gospel. I'm going to share a scripture with you from Romans. This is, of course, Paul speaking. He says, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. One of the things that I'd like to say is, if you're reading the scriptures and you see in what you're reading how you can love your family, yourself, your neighbors, your friends, your enemies, to a greater capacity, that is God talking to you through the scriptures. If it's not saying that, then I'm sure there's a message in there, but it's not there for you right at this moment. And that's okay. We all learn as we move forward in Christ in our own time. There is no commandment that you can give me that I cannot explain to you how that is a part of the law of love. Because everything, every commandment we've been given is all about how to love God, love the creation, love our neighbors. One of the things I like to say about the New Testament, about the Gospels in the New Testament, I should say, and in 3rd Nephi, when Jesus comes to the Nephites, I like to say that the Gospels are the Torah lived. As we read the life of Jesus Christ, we are watching through these words, the Torah come to life as Jesus, through his teachings and through the expression that was every moment that he walked the earth in the flesh. A reflection of what that law that Moses gave us, that God gave us through Moses, I should say, is. Go through the Ten Commandments. Every single one of those is about love. It's about loving God. Or it's about loving your neighbors. I'm not going to go through all of them, but why would you murder someone? Why would you commit adultery if you love your neighbors, if you love your enemies? Why would you covet that which someone else has been blessed with? If you love God, you'll be happy with what the Lord has provided for you. If you love your neighbor, you'll be happy and rejoice with them, with the things that they have been given, that they have been blessed with. You're not going to lie. You're not going to steal. You're not going to take the Lord's name in vain, which I said before to me, isn't about how you speak so much as it is how you live your life. If you say, I'm a Christian, but then you don't act like a Christian, you're not living that law of love, 
then have you taken the Lord's name in vain? I'm not going to judge you, but it's a question you should ask yourself. So this Christmas season, we think about the birth of Jesus Christ. And again, I know there are many that don't believe that Jesus was born on December 25th, and that's fine. We don't know when he was born. At the end of the day, though, now is a time when the world celebrates. And as I always say, let's celebrate with them. There's never a wrong time to celebrate Jesus Christ. So while the world is celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, we are thinking about the birth of the love of God. John 3, 16 and 17. God sent his son because he loves the world. He didn't send Jesus to condemn us, but to save us. Yes, I'm paraphrasing those. But that's what the verses say. It's all about love. Jesus loved us so much that he was willing to come here and suffer from birth. One of the things that I read I found interesting is that based on the animals that were in the manger, that it's most likely that Jesus may have been in a kitchen because back then certain livestock stayed and may have stayed in the house. I don't know if that's true or not. But the reason why I bring it up is because wherever he was, he was not in a palace. He was a king born, if it was in a kitchen, that is what? A place where you prepare food, where you prepare to serve others. That's what Jesus' life was about. He was born in a place of service with animals, born into servitude. What better place to define his life by his birth than there? We know that Jesus was hunted as a child. His family had to flee with him into Egypt. Is it any wonder when his parents panicked after coming back, after returning home, to find Jesus missing after traveling a couple of days, only to return to find him in the temple when he was 12. But again, that reflects his life of service. He was, as he said, being about his father's business. He could have been a carpenter. He was the son of God. He could have done anything he wanted. He turned water into wine. He walked on water. He performed all sorts of miracles. But he never accepted money for that. It didn't make him rich. It made him an outcast. Why? Because he wouldn't join any of the sects of his day. He would have rather they all worked together instead of against each other. But they were so busy squabbling. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? We have so many different Latter-day Saint branches trying to say what's important, just like in Jesus' time with the Jews. Who should be doing what? Who has the authority to do what? Who's right? Who's wrong? But Jesus didn't worry about who was right. He worried about what was right. He didn't teach people to follow other people. He taught them to follow God, follow their hearts, and to love one another. And again, he showed that love by his life and by his death. He was born in humble circumstances, and he died upon a cross. But just as the king of Israel, Herod, couldn't find him, couldn't control him, couldn't stop him, Neither could death itself. And he was resurrected, that we may be resurrected. Brothers and sisters, this is the message of love that Jesus left for us. To serve one another. To accept one another. To stop bickering over ridiculous theological arguments. Stop focusing on which church is true, and instead we can focus on ourselves being true to God. Do we join a church because we need to be right and everyone else needs to be wrong? 
Or do we join a church because we want to find the kingdom of God? Because the kingdom of God accepts all saints, regardless of what branch of our shared faith we belong to. The Lord doesn't care which church of man you belong to. The Lord only cares if you belong to Jesus Christ. And belonging to a particular church doesn't get you there. It can't. Because no church is perfect. No church has 100% correct theology. In my mind, there's only three theologies that any church can teach to bring you to God. Love your neighbor, the creation, your family, your enemies, just everyone. Just love is the first one. The second will be build a personal relationship with God. You can follow prophets, but they can only take you so far. We are called to be a prophetic people. I will never tell you to stop following Jesus Christ, to stop seeking after Jesus Christ. My mission is to make the introduction for you, not to hold your hand or tell you what to do. And I testify to you in the name of Jesus Christ that all prophets, all apostles of the Restoration, that's what we're called to do. Yes, we can lead organizations. But an organization of man, again, cannot take you to Jesus Christ like having a personal relationship of your own can do. And the third is to seek spiritual gifts. Just as the scriptures tell us, to seek visions, revelations, ministering angels. As Mormon says in Moroni 7, these things have not gone away. I see so much of the spirit of contention on social media, on the internet. Brother fighting against brother, sister fighting against sister, and all claiming to be doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. I testify to you that as disciples of Jesus Christ, we must light this candle of love and in humility walk the path of Jesus, being submissive to the Holy Spirit and loving those that would persecute us, abuse us, or use us. That doesn't mean that we have to accept it or put up with it. We can and we should walk away, but we love and we forgive. We cannot let people harm us while at the same time forgiving them. Even as Jesus said to those that whipped and scourged him and crucified him, Jesus said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. I know it's hard. I have wept with you as you've reached out to me and told me your stories. I have hurt with you. And some of you are still going through these trials and these tribulations that these churches are putting you through. God gives us the authority to love, not to hate, to build up, not to tear down. And through the atonement of Jesus Christ, I testify to you also. that God's love, that pure love of God. That pure light of Christ flows through us and heals us. We will learn to love these brothers and sisters that have hurt us. And like Jesus, we will understand and we'll be able to say, Forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. So this Christmas season, let's light that candle of love. Let's remember the healing of the atonement. The humility of the birth of Jesus Christ. Jesus, the God who gave us the Torah. From his humble beginnings to his horrific end which was not a true ending, but merely a temporary, small, insignificant thing that he easily overcame. 
never to die again. There's power in the atonement beyond what any of us can comprehend. So let us move forward in his grace and find his love in our hearts and be that light into the world that he has called us as disciples to be. That's my message. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are now going to take the sacrament of communion. I'm going to play a recording of our message on communion, and then Christine is going to offer both prayers. For those that are unfamiliar with this or maybe new, Christine has been ordained. She is a high priestess in the fellowship. She does have the keys to bless the sacrament. If you'd like to pause the video for a moment and go and get bread and water or wine to partake the sacrament with us, please do so. Once she has offered both prayers, there'll be an opportunity for you to pause the video, take communion, and meditate for a moment about the atonement of Jesus Christ. And this being the Christmas season, I would also suggest that you meditate on the love that is his birth, the joy that is his birth, the peace that is his birth, from the spirit and the power of taking that communion after being blessed by one with authority. And when you're ready, to unpause the video, we'll be here to conclude the service together. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to his mission to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of Thy Son, and witness unto Thee, O oh God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of Thy Son, and always remember Him, and keep His commandments which He hath given them, that they may always have His Spirit to be with them. Amen. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee, in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. I want to thank you for being with us and worshiping with us today. I hope that you felt the love of this message. And I hope that it moves you to share this video, to like it, share it, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, I'm now going to offer our closing prayer. You let him should die. We bow our heads before you at this time to thank you for this opportunity and this blessing that we've had to worship together in your name. To be together, to pray together, to offer the Shema together. I pray that when those that 
You were presented this message to have the opportunity to hear the words that we speak. Whoever is sharing the message, it's me this week. There'll be others in the future as we move forward in faith. We ask that you please open our eyes, our mouths, and our ears, that we may speak spirit to spirit one with another, that we may feel the peace, the love, and the joy of your gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. We ask you that you help us to meet each other where we are and to learn from one another and to grow with one another, not to fight not to debate, but to discuss. Bless us with open hearts and contrite spirits that we will in humility share what we believe, share what we know, and be open to the words of our fellow Latter-day Saints, our fellow Christians, that we will hear the spirit of what they are saying, that we may grow together in Christ, learning from one another. We know and we understand that there are language barriers, even when we all speak the same language. The understanding of what our words mean different, differ. The experiences that we've had are different. Therefore, the interpretations of the teachings of the prophets and the apostles of the various churches within your movement, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, our understandings will be different. And yet at the same time, in many cases they may be the same, even though we're describing these similarities with different words that makes them seem or feel foreign to us. Therefore, we ask and we pray that you will open our minds, open our hearts, open our eyes, and open our ears. That we will seek oneness. We will seek understanding. We will be patient as we try to learn from one another and teach one another. Help us to have the love that Jesus commanded us to have that we may love one another, regardless of which branch of the faith we belong to. That we will be able to forgive the hurts of the past, the sins of our forebears. That we may move forward in Christ and be one people and be Israel and build your kingdom. And leave these churches of men behind. Leave these creeds of men behind. I feel impressed by thy spirit. To pray now for the sisters. Through your prophetess, Christine, you have asked that they gather. As they form a sisterhood. And Satan has been working so hard to stop that from happening. Even as the sisters began to gather, Satan immediately began looking for kinks in the armor that he might get through and destroy your works. But we know that any setbacks are temporary. And we know that there are sisters ready to move forward in your name to be ordained into the sisterhood whether it be of Miriam or Magdalene to move forward in your name bringing forth your mighty works so we ask that you please soften the hearts of the sisters that they will hear and they will heed your call. And that they will follow your commandments 
your teachings, your instructions has given through your mouth, excuse me, has given through your holy mouthpiece through Christine they will feel the spirit of that message they will come in humility to seek greater understanding together to bring the restoration of the sisterhood to pass here in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints here in the fellowship of Christ whether this be sisters that were born and what we in this, as a society call a biological female or those that are transgender Help these sisters to gather together in your holy name. Please bring forward the sisters that you have called to lead them in your name. Give them the strength of mind, of spirit, and of character that your will may be done. And please bless us in the brotherhood, those of us in the brotherhood, with the patience to listen to them and to you. To feel thy spirit and know how we can help without being overbearing, condescending, or just generally getting in the way. Help us that we may organize as a brotherhood as well. Help us with this, that your love your hope and your peace. The hope, peace, and love of Jesus Christ can shine like a light, like a beacon, being the light of Christ. From the hill that is the Church of Jesus Christ in Christian fellowship, help us to be one in your name, regardless of church, sect, or denomination, or lack thereof. Again, we thank thee for all thy many blessings. We pray these things to thee humbly in the name of thy beloved Son, even Jesus Christ. So mote it be. Amen.